several videos now, we've learned neurons are cells of the nervous system, responsible for getting messages where they need to go throughout your body. Messages such as, walk up these stairs, this tastes bad, that music is too loud. So how does a message travel through a neuron? The message travels as an impulse. A nerve impulse is actually an electrochemical process that happens because of changes in amounts of sodium and potassium ions inside and outside the neuron. This is also called an action potential. I'm going to zoom in a bit and look just at a small section of the axon while we talk about what happens during an action potential. Like other cells, neurons have a semi-permeable membrane which has special gates that control what is allowed in and out of the cell. When there's no message being carried by the neuron, it's at rest. At this time, there are more sodium ions outside than inside, and these are positive ions. There are also more potassium ions inside than outside the neuron, and they are also positive. There's chloride ions inside as well, and they are negative. There's also other negative proteins and things inside the neuron. At this time, all the ion gates are closed, so everything is staying pretty much where it is. As ions cannot pass through the membrane, they need a gate. There are more sodium ions outside the neuron than there are potassium ions inside. And with the other negative ions and proteins inside, this gives the neuron a negative charge. It's at about negative 70 millivolts and is what we call polarized. Depolarization happens when the sodium gates open and sodium comes into the neuron. Now there's lots of sodium inside as well as the potassium that was already there. For our purposes, think of the chloride ions as opportunistic. If a gate is open, they'll join in going through it. So there are now chloride ions outside the neuron. With these changes of ion location, it is now positive inside the axon at about positive 40 millivolts. Repolarization happens next and that happens when the sodium gates close and potassium gates open. Potassium flows out of the cell while that chloride will flow in. So now the neuron has a negative charge again, which is correct for a resting neuron. But notice the sodium and potassium are on the wrong sides. To correct the ions, there is a sodium-potassium pump which moves three sodium ions out for every two potassium ions it moves into the neuron. This requires ATP or energy to work. While the sodium potassium pump is moving those ions to their proper place, this section of the axon cannot depolarize. This is called the refractory period. This helps the action potential travel one way through the axon. An impulse travels like a wave down the axon, signaling the next section to depolarize, just like doing the wave at a baseball game. When you stand up, that signals for the person next to you to stand. Looking at our neuron, say the middle section of this axon is currently depolarized. It is you standing during the wave. This first section already depolarized, repolarized, and is in the refractory period. It's the person to your right who is in the process of sitting down. This section can't depolarize again right now. Imagine that person next to you has to fully sit before they're allowed to stand again. That only leaves the next section. It's currently at rest, but will depolarize soon. Just as the person on your left is sitting, but is about to stand now that you're standing. Looking at the neuron charges on a graph, here is our resting neuron at negative 70 millivolts. Depolarization, remember, happens with those sodium gates opening and it gets to about 40 millivolts. Then those close, the potassium gates open for repolarization. 
and the charge will drop. It is actually going to drop a bit below our negative 70 resting. Potassium gates are slow to close and extra chloride ions rush through it. This is called hyperpolarization. With those chloride ions coming in through the potassium gate, the membrane potential is closer to negative 90 millivolts. Once those potassium gates do close and the sodium potassium pump gets going, we'll get back to the negative 70 millivolt resting potential. But remember the refractory period until we do get to that negative 70 millivolts. Action potentials can be difficult to process. Hopefully this video and the diagrams have helped your learning. Look for our next video all about how those messages pass between neurons.